This is Unregular Radio. <laughs> Radio back live. Two hotheads. Where activism happens. And it's happening right now. We have from past mass amendment, Tara Fredericks on the line. Say hello, Tara. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me on your show. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for coming on. And so um, you're part of an organization uh, that has just recently... Um, filed paperwork with the state of Massachusetts in order to pass a ballot initiative. And uh, that ba- right. that ballot, inash- blah, 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 ballot initiative is uh, about what now? Well, over the last century or so, people have been losing their influence over our democratic process. And we feel that um, there needs to be a greater check and balance on government. And in the 1917 Constitutional Convention, the delegates are very concerned about the quote-unquote invisible government word they used. And they enacted the um, Initiative and Referendum Amendment to the Constitution, which is uh, allows citizen petition to, uh, in effect, uh, in effect uh, change laws and amend the Constitution when they feel like government is getting out of control. So we believe that uh, we've got way too much money in the system, uh, con- you know, allowing effectively empires to be built, uh, corporate empires and big government empires, and we want to take back control and we want to bring a question to the voters and ask them whether corporations are people and whether money is speech. So um, with the corporations as people, all corporations are not people and money is not speech, are the two inseparable to you or, or could you like separate one from the other? Well, we've put them together because we think they're very important, uh, because we believe that uh, although we're big supporters of union, we, we are not supporters of blank check unions or a $400,000 a year lobbyist, no matter what color they are. And so we believe that uh, by controlling the amount of money in the electoral process that we'll keep uh, all organizations in check, uh, union or not, uh, friendly or not. My question is, uh, it all sounds good, but how are you going to do this? Like, what's in the actual language of this initiative? Because I don't know how you can do it. Well, I certainly can read you the language if you'd like. Um, well, you, if you could summarize it, what, what, what it actually yeah, just would do. That corporations are not people and may be regulated. The rights afforded to human habit- inhabitants under this Constitution are not applicable to corporations, limited liability companies, or any other corporate entity. Any references to persons, citizens, inhabitants, et cetera, et cetera, are about natural people as opposed to entities and that money is not free speech and may be regulated. Because right now, um, our legislators tell us that they can't regulate um, the amount of money in the electoral process because of Citizens United and um, the right to free speech is now afforded to a uh, corporation. When you say regulate, who's going to regulate it, number one? And number two, how do you regulate? Like, are you actually going to regulate my radio show? Are you going to regulate my uh, column in the Weekly Dig because it's uh, on Dig Boston? Because that's a corporation that's printing that story. How do you reg- Are you going to regulate the press? That's free yes, speech. Actually, there's a section three to it that says nothing contained in this amendment shall be construed to abridge the freedom of the press. Um, the goal is to regulate the amount of money in the electoral system, and we have a uh-huh. series of petitions that we are going to be filing over the next few years to clarify and tighten up um, the electoral process. But this is the first one, and we can't move forward with other changes, including changes that the legislature may be uh, interested in making, but they have proven that they are not making any uh, electoral or campaign reform. We uh, required publicly, um, we had a resolution some years back to require that all elections be federally funded, which would reduce or dramatically limit the amount of money in the uh, electoral system, and they refused to um, put that forth. So we we created a resolution, a friendly resolution, and then they um, ignored it. So we believe that we have to go down the road of what we call binding law and binding amendments, um, because otherwise the legislators just the legislators just ignore it. We're all familiar with that. I mean, that's how uh, for marijuana, which where I come from, reform is the only way we are able to get it done is through the initiative. And we're really lucky. We're okay. one of the what is it, twenty twenty one states across the uh, the country that have open access to ballots. Um, and actually, it's very exciting. Yes, yeah, the no. wonderful uh, web website, which I can't find. I can't remember the name of it right now. But they grade the um, a citizen referendum process. Uh, it's Massachusetts got a C minus. Uh, New Hampshire got a D. But there are a large a number of criteria that um, that, re- that that determine how uh, accessible these ballots are. And it's really really hard. We have to uh, get ninety thousand signatures to get seventy thousand valid signatures in two months. So we really need help this fall. So anybody that wants to step forward, please see. Um, passmassamendment.org and uh, step up. Yeah, and that's definitely something that I plan on collecting signatures for. 
Um, but and so as but to get back to the whole thing, money is 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 uh, isn't speech. So you you guys sell uh, yard signs, right? I bought one. The and that's it. <laughs> they say on one side, corporations are not people, and and money is not speech, right? Yep. Yeah. And so when I'm when I am like when I purchase that yard sign to put in my yard, aren't I turning? my five dollars or whatever it was that i paid for the yard sign into speech uh yes certainly but what we don't believe is that um there should be an unlimited amount of money in the electoral system so that if you had five hundred thousand dollars you could buy five hundred thousand well you could buy a hundred thousand signs um but in the campaign process what happens is there's a short amount of time where candidates are campaigning and the people who buy the media get to then control the mind share of the public and we believe that it should be fair, more fair. It should be about individuals. It should be about in-region um, campaign donations. For example, we'd like to regulate the... Uh, we really like the only campaign money in a particular region to be for the voters of that region. So, for example, Larry Lissick is a great lecture about the amount of money that gets poured into a region from uh, outside corporations, international corporations, when specific... Um, candidates are going up uh, to an election and so if you had only the voters in a particular region and you were only allowed to 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 donate up to say fifty dollars you suddenly make the electoral process accessible to the citizens and and only about the citizens of that district not about outside money coming in and i definitely understand that but i mean don't you think that there'll be i mean folks with money are fairly creative right and don't you think that they'll find vehicles, like, or by just you know getting people to donate money for them from within the district? You know, individuals, um, yeah, like individuals. Yeah, it's very difficult. Yeah, because right now what'll happen is they'll give employees bonuses and then mention that it'd be really good if they donated some money to so and so, and so then there'll be a lot of social pressure to to accommodate that. And so, but we feel it'll be greatly limited if if it's fifty dollars per person because you'd have to do a lot of work to go get all of your employees to vote, and because they're not excuse me, for, to turn, turn that $50 over, and because they actually have the right not to, um, you know, it, it becomes a much harder thing to distort. Very interesting. Uh, my libertarian side doesn't like this, but you're, you're winning <laughs> me over. Because, you know what, it is, I mean, I, this is the reality. It is about money, you know. So many of us have uh, worked campaigns, and it, it really is about money. I'm bringing up money, <clears throat> How do you like? I know how hard it is to get an, a, a ballot initiative on the ballot. I've worked on them. Frank Frank collected more signatures than a lot of people that I know. Even you know, he's collected more signatures than myself. We're both aware of how hard nah, it is. It's not a pissing contest. How <laughs> hard? No, but I know. But I'm just you know, we are aware. No, of I know. How, yeah, yeah. We've, we've been in the shit. I, I, and, I dig and, it. And my question is, how are you going to get this done? Because I don't know any group that's done it. In the last 20 years, by grassroots, probably the closest is Carla Howell's group, and and they lost. They were up against big money. You're going to be up against big money on this, even if you get it on the ballot. How how do you expect to get it on the ballot? That's my, or is this just about education? Yeah, we refuse to take any money. We won't use any uh, pay-to-play petition signature services where you buy signatures. We feel like that's not the intent of the citizen uh, initiative and referendum amendment of the Constitution that are, are the framers of our Constitution uh, put in place. And so we believe that, the, that, that either people are going to come out and do this, or they're not. And if they don't believe that our, excuse me, that our government is controlled by corporations and big government, then they won't come out. But we believe that they will, because we are looking at the Free Speech for People survey, and 67% of um, Republican voters think that uh, corporations have too much control, and you know something like 72 percent of independents and 80 something percent of Democrats. So this is a, a large majority of people believe that something has to happen, yeah. and we believe that this is it because, frankly, it's the only game in town. Nothing else is, is, that anybody is doing is binding, and is of the power of the people. It's all about begging legislators to do something, maybe someday. And this is about doing it now. And yeah. this is about the citizens being in charge and taking back their government. I just, uh, I just really, I mean, I like what you're saying, but at the same time, I just don't see any pr- like. I, 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 we have this. We have the same support, if not higher, for the marijuana thing. It would have went nowhere if they hadn't had paid signature gatherers. I, I have known nobody 
that's done it the way that you're presenting it. I, I think the system is broken. I think that there are too many signatures needed, and it's a sad state of affairs when every initiative that ever passes in a state uses paid signature gatherers, but I just don't see how... I don't know. I don't see how it can even get on the ballot. I'll tell you. Well, I mean, I'll so far, we need ten. We need ten people to get two hundred signatures a day. Okay, and then each? we're golden. And I, we already have three or four people that are signed on to do at least that. We have a couple of people that are signed on to work sixteen hours a day. There are people that are putting their life on hold. They're, that they're putting their business on hold to do this. See, but by paying by I mean, paying you guys people were for taking signatures, care of camp down at Camp Dewey. How many hours were there? You there a day? Yeah, yeah? No, I know. I dig that, but like. The fact is, I've worked as a paid signature gatherer before, and I was able to do that. I was able to go out there and, you know, work on causes that I supported and be able to provide for myself at the same exact time, you know? And so, if part of money not being speech means that, like, people can't pay for signature gatherers, gatherers anymore, then that's something that, you know, is taking bread out of, bread off my table when that kind of, when that season comes around for me, because I still do that, you know? Yeah. That's an interesting point. I hadn't thought of that. You know, it is because I, I, I've, I've made decent money during campaign season, you know, working on things that I support, you know, but couldn't necessarily just donate my time to because I have a family to provide for. Yeah, you know? and, and I would, how, do we know, how do we know that the person that's or the, the entity that's donating money toward buying those signatures is not doing it for the wrong reasons and maybe we don't care? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'll have to talk about the team about yeah. that. Well, well you don't, but, but the other point is like, if you don't have paid signatures, you're basically making the ballot initiative uh, process. It won't work in Massachusetts. Nothing will get on the ballot. I'm, I mean, point when I, I look at real the real world, there is no initiative in the last 20 years. And I would go back even further whenever they started this initiative process. I don't know any ballot initiative that ever got on the ballot statewide binding without paid signature gatherers. Well, it's because they make you get the signatures once, and then if the how or if if they don't accept the the resolution, you have to go out and you have to get them all over again. If you guys do it, it will be the first. You know, <laughs> that would be but awesome. That's, that's like the reality of the situation. Like you have to get them twice. You have to get the same amount of signatures twice. I know. And technically, it can't even be the same people. Yeah, it can't. The first it has to be new people. It has the to be new time. people. Yeah. You know, whether or not they check that to say, "Oh no, this guy signed it before." You know, I don't really know, but. Um, but regardless, I'm still going to come out there and volunteer and collect signatures Thank for you. it and bring people out there to Thank do it you. as well, you know, um, because it is important and it is something that, that people should get involved with and donate their time. It's very easy to collect signatures, a little scary in the beginning. The, 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 most, the most frightening thing is going in and asking the guy the, at the supermarket if you can stand out in front of his store, you know. Yeah. But basically, <laughs> like, you know, you just have to arm yourself with the law and know that as long as it, the, the supermarket is connected to another business, that they have no right to tell you that you can't stand there. You know, only standalone buildings can do that. Um, and I mean, actually, not even. No, no, no. If if you have a public way, they have to allow you. You can just call the police. The police come right over and tell them. It's, yeah. it's not that big a deal. So you're saying that even if it is a standalone mm-hmm. store, so describe up what what is what is the the definition of a public way? Um. So okay. So as the public, you cannot. You, you can be in the public way, but not disruptive to the public way. Exactly. So, for example, you can stand next to where the people are coming into the store, but you can't jump in front of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so, ev- so the way the law, as was written when, when last I had collected signatures, I had understood, was that um, places where they were a single business, you know, where, granted, they where probably... it wasn't a, a plaza. Exactly, not a plaza or not something like that, plaza. just like solely like a stop and shop, right? That... Um, you couldn't just go there and expect to do it. You know what I mean? It was something where you would have to have set a time up and, and you know, schedule for you to be there, basically. Is the, is I'll have to check on that because I wasn't aware of that. I've, I've petitioned at single buildings. Yeah, no, I have too, totally. Um, the yeah. manager called the police and police came and the police just told them to leave me alone. Yeah, yeah, I called the cops on a manager at Whole Foods in Cambridge once because they tried, like, pulling, pulling, shit. pulling their weight on me. <laughs> and I was like, listen here, major corporation. And I called the lady's boss and that lady's boss and said, hey, the cops are on their way, so I can stand out here and collect signatures so you can deal with the cops. I mean, <laughs> Well, you libertarians, aren't deal. you glad the cops are there enforcing your rights? Well, I don't need them to enforce my rights because I would have stood there anyway. They would have had to come and use force against me <laughs> to get somebody to come out of there. Yeah. You know? We, we need the direct action guys to come and keep us 
Uh, safe. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, yeah, I mean, but there's a role for the police, you know, and, and, and I think that even in a yeah. libertarian kind of sense, there's a there's a role for the police because, you know, I mean, I, there's a difference between being a libertarian and being a minarchist or an anarchist, you know, yeah. like a minarchist is like, like, uh, like uh, a super extreme libertarian who believes in like absolutely no, no public state. property, yeah. no state whatsoever, you know, I think most libertarians are, you know, they don't. They just don't believe in coercion. You know, they don't exactly. want to be coerced into things. You know, exactly. And, but I think they're perfectly fine. So, with, so are you? Are you guys going to get me uh, a Tea Party endorsement or some kind of um, <laughs> you know libertarian endorsement? Because you know a lot of people don't understand that the, the corporate personhood and the big the, the, the global companies are clobbering small business yeah. by using these types of um, legal technicalities to uh, reduce their costs and push the cost out to their community. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, I think that. There's a lot of support from the libertarian community um, on the basis that their corporations aren't people. You know, I think we're going to get the pushback is on the money isn't speech part. Yep. You know, but I think when you explain it to them in a way that is is understandable to them, uh, they're still going to cringe a, bat, a little bit, a little bit because of the fact that it would be public money that would be funding campaigns at that point. You know, and that's something where well, okay. You know, but let me let me address that for a moment. Just to, I don't know how much time we have, but um, no, plenty of time. For example, right now, you we we lease our we we sell well, it's sort of like a lease. We sell our air, airwaves so that people get to broadcast TV and radio. True. Uh, part of that is that they're supposed to have public service announcements. What they do is they put them at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. yeah. And what we hope that they'll do is give every. Every person that's gone to the trouble of getting on the ballot, which is already so hard. Oh my God! You get on the ballot, you should get some free prime time. Oh, I love. So you this. don't need as much. So you don't need as much money to, oh, to my run God. a campaign. Like, you know, this is this is so topical because this is this is what pisses me off. Exactly what you're saying. You know, the, I know all about these rules with the FCC and the, and the uh, television and the radio. They're supposed to give access to candidates. And we have, we have a friend of ours, Dan uh, Fishman, who ran as a libertarian for uh, U.S. Senate last time. Yep. And uh, when still it came, running. yeah, when he's he's, st- he's running for some other offices now, but he's still running. But when it came time to go on Channel Five, WCVB, they they basically told him they wouldn't have him in the debate with uh, who was it, T- uh, Richard Tissay and yeah, uh, Tissay John and, Tierney, and Tierney yeah. because he didn't uh, put fifty thousand dollars down in advertising with them. No kidding. Yeah, you know no, what I mean? they literally said that. They like, literally, literally said, said that because he, he didn't have like enough employees, hadn't bought enough ad ad buys, and but he did meet the criteria for polling at two percent. And it really, you know, that the whole community thing where you're supposed to, uh, like you said, serve the community. That seems to be have gone by the wayside at most of these mega corporations that run the radio and the TV. They don't give a shit anymore. Well, I'll tell you. You know, if we had a st- the stronger commons we have, the less government we need. Because if you had commons that, that gave right. us a right to our w- airwaves, then we wouldn't need to spend all this money trying to get around to corporate owners. Yes. I mean, that, that, I, I think that, that, you know, that this is what our show is about, trying to bring people together from both uh, the left and the right, because I think there is a lot of common ground. And this is one of those issues I think we're all, you know... I think a lot of times my bigger issue is just overall electoral reform because I wish that we broke the two-party monopoly that we had some uh, like they have runoff voting in Cambridge, Mass. I love that. Where yeah, you fusion vote, voting's awesome. Yeah, one, two, three, four. You can r- rate your candidates and, and vote for more than one. I mean, it's just so love stifling that. in this country the rules and the regulations for exactly what you're talking about the people with the money. Yeah, and it's it's well. It's, one of the reasons that I'm doing this personally, the past mass amendment, is to bring people out from all the different parties because so many people believe in this. That for me, it's an exercise in the commons. I, I'm I, I like what you're saying. I like what you're doing. I, I really do appreciate it. So tell me again. Uh, tell us again. Where where exactly can people uh, find out more information? Where can they get involved? Uh, you know, things like that. Yeah, www.passmassamendment.org. Uh, we're on Facebook. You can come down next Saturday from 2 to 4 at the Democracy Center, uh, 45 Auburn Street in Cambridge. Um, is that enough information? They can call me direct, 978-808-7173. That's awesome. 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 I'm in Cambridge, too, so I'm going to check out that Democracy Center. I've been by there a few times. Yeah, I'll yeah. No, out. that's um, that's a good, that's a cool space over there. And, um, you know, so I'm definitely going to be volunteering, and you're going to be hearing more about this on our show here. 
And, uh, you know, we'd love to have you back on again. Thank you for coming on, Tara, and uh, letting Thank us know. Thank you so much, Frank. Yeah, no, it was an Good awesome. With you. Yeah, <laughs> always a pleasure, you know. And, uh, have a great day. Yeah, you too. Take it easy. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So that was uh, Tara Fredericks from Pass Mass Amendment, and uh, they are endeavoring to get a ballot initiative passed here in Massachusetts to say that corporations are not people and that money is not speech. And they're going to need all the help they can get. Check out their website, passmassamendment.com. They're having every other Saturday at the Democracy Center um, is going to be going on. We have have meetings and things like that, and uh, pretty sure they follow an open uh, kind of uh, GA style of discussion. So if you want to get involved and have your voice be heard, uh, they'd be very happy to have you there. And uh, I'm usually at work when it's going on, but I'll maybe try to make it there one of these one of these Saturdays. And uh, yeah, so we are the two hotheads, and this is where activism happens. And we're going to take a quick break here and come back, and uh, we might be talking to uh, Cam Dizzle. Cam Dizzle. Cammy D. Cammy D. Two hot hands. We'll be back. Oh, yeah, that's right. That We have to say that part, too. And 617 206 <laughs> uh, 1050 <laughs> if you want to weigh in. 617 206 1050. 1050. We're the two hot hands. Boston's right. b- b- best online r- radio. On regular radio.